to talk about the Margaritaville, um, the harrowing Margaritaville voyage that you tried to go on? Uh, okay, so I'm at the beach, living the beach lifestyle like Island Boy do. You know how he does it. And we head over to Broadway on the beach, uh, which is in Myrtle Beach, which was about a half hour from Polly's. Oh, Island, geez, you had to staying. drive a half hour on this? And it was 40 minutes of the traffic, oh, my dude. Damn, dude. So we drive 40 minutes over there, and first off, we park at the opposite end of the place from the Margaritaville. So I'm like, oh, fuck. Gonna get a good walk. Gonna be all sweaty for, for Jim when I show up. That's embarrassing. On the drive over, my father-in-law, Tommy, uh, uh, Low Country Tom, tells me that if I... Uh, the, the last time he was at Margaritaville, uh, fucking he rolled up and the place was packed. Who's there playing a set? Well, why is James God, Buffett I would <gasps> playing a set? So what? My anticipation is already like off the charts. It's like I've been eating garlic bread all day. I'm out of control just here. Just flooded. Just now, that basement flooded. is flooded. Just drenched. Now, have you been to a, a Margaritaville before, Justin? Was this your first experience? Yeah, but it was before I went through the change of life. Oh, I see. Which mm. means becoming a dad and getting really into Jimmy Buffett. So uh, I, I, we walk through this place, and it's sort of like if Jersey Shore... Like not, it's not not Jersey Shore the TV show, but like it's got that like boardwalk vibe, mm. but it's but it's you know in the sweltering miserable ninety five degree heat of South Carolina, and we're strolling along. I have to walk past a, a closed down Magic Quest, which is like oh, the fuck. saddest. Oh, I know, no. fucking brutal. I I walk past a magic shop that I didn't have time to go into because I was so hungry for some of that coconut shrimp prepared by JB himself. Had the magic and shop I, absorbed all the magic from Magic Quest, and that's why you know they thought it was a heyday. They were like, "Well, listen, there's a lot of wands over there. Let's go get our get our fill, pick it clean." <laughs> they like the vultures it. we are. Um, so we get to. To Margaritaville, it it is five thirty somewhere. In, I'm gonna say the afternoon. <laughs> it is five thirty somewhere, and it's five thirty there as well. So I should have anticipated that five o'clock is the worst time to go to Margaritaville. Obviously, but we show up at five thirty. My daughter is like basically like dehydrated. She's just a husk that I'm like dragging <laughs> behind me on a leash. And we're like dead, basically. We're like on the verge of death. And I show up and I'm just, I'm looking around, like peeking around. Like I know JB's probably expecting me because he heard Island Boys on his way over. I get in there and they tell us that to see our party, we are going to have to wait. This is not an exaggeration. Two hours. Whoa. Wow. How many were in your party? 30, seven 36. And a baby. 36. No, seven people and a baby. That it was a people bad. too, but like you got to specify that for a high tripper. Well, okay, you so, you ex you explained the weight actually earlier in the story, and that is that Jim James Buffett the third is making all the coconut shrimp himself. <laughs> it is the only thing on the menu, which is kind of weird. Like they That's don't, he, weird. he doesn't know how to make margaritas, which is like he's obviously very successful. He has a, he has people to do that for him, but he can make a mean fucking coconut shrimp. So you mainly just come in and you get the you get the shrimp, no questions asked. Um, but it does take him a while to prepare them. So two hours, two hours of waiting, two hours. No way. Absolutely cannot do it. And what's that like lurking over my shoulder behind me? You guessed it. Fucking Joe's Crab Shack. The second choice. Like we're always second choice. America's so second fair. choice. Yeah. America's second choice. And like I would have had to walk. Like if we didn't want to eat Joe's Crab Shack, we would have had to walk all the way the fuck back up here to eat it like the Japanese hibachi place at the Myr Myrtle Beach Broadway on the beach. Like no, not happening. Yeah. It's got to be Joe's Crab Shack. We would have died. We wouldn't have lived. I get in there. They're playing uh, uh, Matchbox Twenties. Ooh. Um, not one of the good ones. Oh. Like my favorite. <laughs> Yeah, no, actually my favorite one. And I'm like, whoa, this is this is pretty okay. I sit down, I order a crab pot, they put a bib on oh, it. Oh man, does and it I'm say something like this guy's a queef? It's <laughs> <laughs> It wasn't Dick's last resort, Chris. Oh, I'm sorry. No, resort. I got confused. This is Josh Crash. They put one on me that says shrimp and ain't easy. Okay, so they do write on him. It did right, but on it didn't. It didn't say this guy's a real. But this I'm guy's the a real queef. I didn't realize that I'm the only one at the table that ordered a dish that. Um, th that necessitated in a bib, Ooh. and I'm also the only one at the table who is not living a life 
in which physical fitness is a large component. Oh no. To put it in a ginger way. So it's like it literally looks like they it, they have t- I I don't know a nice way of saying this. The, the, I'm shaming myself here, but I'm the only fat one and I have a bib and claw crackers that they brought special for me literally 20 minutes before I did not need to be living this life for 20 minutes before the food arrived. They addressed it like very early on in the meal. I was drinking a huge uh, glass of blue drink that had a shark filled with a red drink that I poured into it called a shark bite. There was a limit too on those on the menu. It said, "Wait, was it a I'm, was yep. the vessel the shark vessel full of red liquid? Was it a glass shark? No, oh, sadly, fuck. it was a rubber shark that I done that I did. My uncle Michael did steal it though. So that I, damn, Mike, you can't leave me question. anything on this. Yeah. The worst day of Justin's life. You couldn't leave him anything. No, no he no, stole no, it he, for John. He didn't just he like stole steal it for from, from Joe Scrabshack. Oh, uh, I see. Um, so uh, just when." I think you should change his name in case they're looking for him, Justin. Just when I think this could not get any darker, uh, JB has abandoned me. Just to recap, JB has abandoned me. I'm wearing a bib that says shrimp and any easy. I'm the only one there on it. (laughs) Is that one keep on it? Uh, Another facet there is a guy making with a balloon hat, making balloon animals table to table. And I can just see from his orbit that he's like about to collide with planet J man. (laughs) And I'm like, this cannot get any fucking worse. And then over the radio, Tracy Chapman's fast car Um, comes on in the Joe's crab shack. I love this fucking song. I do not want that. And like, jalapeno slammers to be in the same zip code yeah. it is uncalled for that i should be subjected to tracy chapman's beautiful dirge of pining and longing for a better life that shall never arrive than why i'm sloppily eating cajun crab legs out of a bucket with a bib while a balloon dipshit hovers and waits for his moment to pounce it was the worst day of my life but the desserts were okay <laughs> Three out of five stars. And a s'mores thing. And this concludes my Yelp review. (laughs) And and then and then we went to the Gilligan's Island Goofy Golf. The only Yelp review said that the every time this guy goes, there's someone pleasuring themselves on the sixth hole. (laughs) And he said, that's a must. What's that? What was the six hole? It was nothing. There was nothing there. There was no one pleasuring themselves. But there wasn't a, a particularly sexy bunker. No, but it did. I mean, it made sense. There was a shack that said garlic bread, except the sign had been like painted over. So obviously it was no longer available. Yeah. Which maybe explains that. But um, yeah, so that was that was the basically the hardest day of my life. And and I blame Jimmy Buffett. Why isn't it. the media covering this is what I want to know. Where is the media? That's what I want to know. Give Lochte a break for a second. He'll be there. Okay, he's not going to swim away. He's got, do, Trust, he's going to keep on fucking up. So just, like, wait till tomorrow. Just come give me a day in the light. Give me a day in the light. Just my day at court. <laughs> that island court. You wouldn't sue James, would you? Who would you no, sue? No, I just want... I just want... A, a small i mean give me a list give me a kill bill top five list of people who wronged you in this story starting with number five until we get up to the main the main offender okay number five myself i did agree to go and i knew that it was in myrtle beach yeah um that's not really one of island boys hangouts that kind of violates this whole chill lifestyle Yeah, absolutely uh i blame the server for not recognizing me like the the greeter at J- jimmy buffett's uh margaritaville yeah. i blame him for not recognizing me from podcasting yeah how many times did you say the phrase don't you know who i am uh just just the once but i thought that would be enough i said uh i'm about to shoot a streaming tv show uh sir that didn't um that didn't and i've made many either. jokes about my fanhood of james buffett so yeah, can you call J- J- so number three James? But I can't really blame him. He can't be everywhere at once. And the server, despite my request, the greeter would not call him hmm. on like the 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 coconut telegraph or whatever they use to communicate with uh with with Jimmy. Um, so you just that would so that, be that would be your kill Bill interaction there, where you actually were interacting with Bill and you didn't want to do it, but you knew you had to yeah. to give your life some kind of like closure. Right. Did you know if you cut a coconut open and you whisper into it, he'll he'll hear it. 
but he might not always answer the way oh, you think. He, yeah. Yeah, you're not going to get you the answer. You got to look out for, for signs. You're not going to get the answer you want, but you're always going to get the answer you need. Thanks, James. Number Thanks, two, James. Number two, number one, just real quick. God. Okay. Uh huh. Obviously. And uh, I feel like well, Tracy Chapman had a hand in this somehow. Tracy Chapman did. Maybe we swap Tracy Chapman number two for just being such a talented, heartbreakingly good songwriter. Yeah. Um, Rob Thomas 2A yeah. for not like for dropping the ball with Matchbox 20, just like letting that whole shit. Maybe we're all to blame for Matchbox 20 not being the prominent force in media. Yeah, why didn't we appreciate them as much as we should have, everyone? Else, I know that's I not me. Every review you read of their albums is just like, I wish it was. Why, not, why isn't it Matchbox 30 or 40? And it's like, can you focus <laughs> on the fucking music instead of talking about how the number could be higher? Um, Where's Smooth 2, the sequel to Smooth? We're all waiting. Google and God, number one. And I guess Yelp for not telling me that there would be a review. I blame a lot of people. Yeah. Side note, do you guys feel like Matchbox 20 is like getting some heat it's again? It's getting some heat again. Yeah. A lot of people are talking about smooth. A lot of people talk about smooth. And I feel like we've rounded the bin. Like when, remember when Dwight started listening to Billy Joel as a joke and then he got really into Billy Joel? I feel like we're all making that Billy Joel switch. Yeah. With, with Matchbox 20. We're kind of appreciating that like, they did have some pretty fucking good songs. Yeah. And they did make a lot of sense, like lyrically, but there are still some pretty good tunes. I've been on board with MV20 since day one. Yeah. I, I found them. Here's a, a little, this might be controversial, but as much as I love Dave Matthews' band, oh God. I found Matchbox 20 to be a, a, a solid, if not better, Dave Matthews' band alternative. Like someone who maybe uh, is lactose that's... intolerant and they only drink almond milk. Matchbox Twenty is the almond milk of music. Do you know who? Do you know who was in Cincinnati last night? Just a scant month before Travis is to make his home there. Uh, why it's Rob Thomas and Counting Crows? I would have Ooh. destroyed that show. Yeah, dude. Shit, that's a good lineup. It's a good lineup. I would have crushed that show. <sighs> what if those two forces get together? And they start a band called Mashbox 30. And the OG crew of Mashbox 20 is like, yo, Rob, yo, Bobby, yo, Bobby Tom, what's going on? You can't just do that to me and us, the rest of the band Matchbox 20. And Rob Thomas is like, I don't even know you guys anymore. But that's true because he's in a fugue state where he can no longer remember Matchbox 20. And I'm worried about him. Did Carlos so Santana cast a memory spell on him? That's yeah. all I want to know. And for a while, he was just a show creator, and he made uh, Veronica Mars. Yeah. Didn't and they were that. like, come back to music. And he's like, I don't know what you're talking about. I've always been a show creator yeah. because of a weird curse that Carlos, that Santana, Carlos Santana put Santana. on him. He played the Forbidden Riff. <laughs> uh, <laughs> super quick update from the Wikipedia page of Matrox 20. Not reading any facts this time. Just want to say they have that timeline that shows when everybody was in the band and what have you. And it extends to 2017, which I feel Whoa, like it's, okay. maybe, it's maybe getting a little bit above. It's like the bridges. Mayan calendar of Wikipedia pages. Like Rob Thomas, I think, will probably g go on there and say, okay, yeah, yeah, probably. I mean, yes. And then in, yes, in, true, in fe but February 2017, there's going to be the Great Cataclysm. And but then mm -hmm. Rob Thomas is gonna get back in the group and be like, guys, time for the smooth sequel, smooth two. It's still a hot one. <laughs> dun, dun. It's a like hot six inches from the midday sun. <laughs> it's a hot one again. <laughs> <laughs> and it's you're still, still like the ocean. <laughs> um so this has been our podcast, my brother, my brother, and me. It's an advice show. I would like to know if it's still a hot one, though. I mean, go global, global warming's really just going buck wild, and I think it just like Rob Thomas has a, a sort of a responsibility. 